and welcome to another video where in today's session I'll be looking over the new for 2023 pre-release material for the level 4 professional synoptic. So this will be the pre-release material now up until AQ16 actually ends in September 2023. So for anyone who has to resit, hopefully not, but if for whatever reason you had to resit your synoptic, this will now be the pre-release material going forward. So I wanted to put this one together just to give you my thoughts and feelings working through this new set of pre-release material. It is worth bearing in mind that in theory you could walk into the professional synoptic exam having never read this before and pass absolutely fine. However, I do think it's worth familiarising yourself with the material. It gives you that little bit of extra confidence going into the exam, knowing that you are familiar with the type of business that you will be working on throughout this exam. So let's get into it and let's have a look at some of the points that I noted as I was reading through. So this is a electric car company called Argent Electric Motors and it was established three years ago. So the first thing I think it's worth noting is that it's a relatively new company. It's owned by four directors who created the company, all of which work full time and form the business's senior management. All directors previously worked within the motor trade and therefore have great knowledge and experience. So that's all good, nothing really to comment on there. So this business is working on the fact that the UK government legislation has come in phasing out the sale of petrol and diesel cars. So it is a growing industry and should in theory continue to grow for the foreseeable future. So it is definitely a market that for car companies they are all trying to get into now and will have to eventually. So this business is taking advantage of the increased sales in electric vehicles, which with the costs of fuel rising significantly, now would be a great time to, as a business to increase the sale of electric vehicles. I think the other aspect to this is a sustainability aspect. So we know that one of the three strands of sustainability within accounting and for a business is environmental. And we know that electric cars in theory produce less emissions and therefore from a sustainability aspect this would be quite an ethical part of any business. I think that we know as well that from a consumer perspective people are definitely more aware of being more environmentally friendly so it would be a great tactic from a business to really push that within their marketing which it does speak about later on. Right, the next part then, the company operates 15 car showrooms across the UK. Now, straight away, this seems to me quite fast growth. So it says up here that the business was established three years ago, and within that time, they already have 15 car showrooms across the UK. That is quite a fast expansion. So just something to be aware of with this is the potential, I would say, for over-trading. And if we come a little bit further down, it says that the business has 250 full-time employees. And it actually states here that it has grown rapidly. Now, on the face of it, that's obviously a good thing. Generally, quick growth, make more money quicker. However, I think something to be very cautious of with, with growing too quickly and potentially even over trading that I would be thinking about there, particularly for, for the synoptic, is if a business has grown that quick, have the processes for the business grown with the size of the company? Because obviously for a large company, the business will have quite different processes to those of a smaller business. And the idea being that you might try and standardize procedures across each showroom to be able to ensure quality. Well, if you've grown that big within three years, have you been able to put those processes in place and put them in place effectively? And can you safely say that you are monitoring those processes effectively? So just, again, something that I would uh, be very aware of is, is how quick this business has grown. 
So something else within this paragraph, it states that all used cars are sold with a two year warranty. Now this is quite unusual. So I would say from a customer service perspective, this would be a, a huge selling point for this business because it is unusual that a used car would be sold with a two year warranty. As a buyer, as a consumer, that would be quite an attractive uh, selling point. To me, that's showing that the business has faith within the cars that they're selling and they're confident that they aren't selling rubbish, effectively. So it also states that the business provides a price match promise, which again is great from a customer service perspective. The only thing I would say that they need to be careful of is over promising. So if you're selling a two year warranty, you're doing a price match promise, is that sustainable as the business grows? I can see something like that maybe for a smaller business where they're trying to attract people when initially starting up. However, for a large business, is that something that they are able to sustain and be able to make a good profit? Coming down then to the company philosophy. So it says that the environmental benefits of electric vehicles are at the core of the AEM brand. Well, they would be because it's probably one of the business's biggest selling points is that they are environmentally sustainable. So if it was me in charge of their marketing, as it says here, there's going to be a lot of focus on that marketing for the lower carbon footprint and, as it says there, noise reduction. And I wouldn't say there's anything else within that section that jumps out at me. However, there may be something that does to you. So obviously read through it yourself in detail as well. So moving on to the operating model. So it says that the business has its head office in an industrial estate in Northwest London. All the business services are based within this central location. Quite interesting because usually a car dealership would, although potentially have a centralized location, there would be support staff within their other distribution centers, but maybe we just don't have enough detail to be able to sort of specify whether that's true or not. However, centralizing your business services can create problems because it does mean that you've got to have good communication and with them having 15 separate centers, that could be somewhat challenging. It then states operational costs need to be kept as low as possible. So I'm wondering if this is why they try uh, to keep all their business services staff in one location, potentially, uh, to try lower the operational costs. It then says managers at the UK showrooms are given inventory turnover targets for the used cars. So not new cars, but for used cars. So effectively what they're doing there is giving them turnover targets so that once those used cars come in, they're trying to flip them or sell them on as quickly as possible. Obviously a car is quite a large item. So getting them in and not having to store them for such a long time which would incur storage costs is, is a good thing. Obviously, the quicker they can get them in and get them sold, the more money that they will make. So moving on to market developments then. So nothing too major in here. However, this would raise one point to me. So it says to help further expand the business, AEM has recently acquired Weldon Vehicles. Although not noted for selling electric vehicles, it has four showrooms in the north of England. Uh, and has an excellent reputation. Now, don't get me wrong, excellent reputation is obviously good. However, not noted for selling electric vehicles. Now, if you if a lot of your branding and a lot of your marketing is around the sale of electric vehicles, buying into somebody who's not actually known for selling electric vehicles potentially could cause issues because you're then having to change the branding or change the perspective customer perspective on how they're viewed within their area. So it says that the four showrooms are in the north of England, okay, which means that you may or they may be well known within that area and have a great reputation, not for electric car sales, which means that you would need to, as I say, change the way that consumers view that brand in order to keep up those sales. Next then the performance appraisal. So it's states here that they're going from assessing based on financial results 
to a more rounded approach using a balanced scorecard. Again, as a business grows, this is something generally they would want to do because the financial result will actually come from not just focusing on the finances, but other sections of the business because it's all right just focusing on finance but that is driven by how customers feel about the business, how the employees feel about the business and do they want to work there and they want to develop, etc. So they've put together this balanced scorecard to assess how the business is doing. And it comes back to an earlier point that I made. Has the business grown too quickly and has those processes grown with the size of the company? And it looks to me as though this is the direction that they're now wanting to go. Potentially, that could have been an issue had they not done that. So it says there are two distinct elements to how the customers view the business. The customer experience, i.e. when they're buying a car, and the satisfaction after buying a car. Now, it then says that the data is showing that customer satisfaction is high when purchasing a vehicle, but that the ongoing aftercare is disappointing unfortunately not uncommon for a car sales business now it appears that they are trying to have good aftercare because they're giving a two-year warranty on used vehicles and they are offering a freed roadside assistance when purchasing a vehicle so they are trying clearly to show people at least initially that they have good aftercare support However, that's clearly not working from the data that's being given. So just something to keep in mind um, if you were doing a SWOT analysis for your exam, that this may come into it as a potential opportunity. Next is employee development. So it says formalized induction courses have been introduced and all new staff are assigned a mentor. So this would definitely be a good step forward for trying to make staff feel like they're getting some value out of an induction course and that they've got someone to ask if they've got any questions and that they are effectively feeling cared for within the business. So it says that overall performance in this area has been positive, although feedback suggests that while many good features have been introduced, the culture within the business is that they are not promoted or encouraged. And I think this can be a quite common for a larger organization where if someone feels that they've been given almost a bit of a tick box exercise to do so that you're being shown this introduction. However, if it's quite a general introduction that's given to everyone potentially, then it might not feel um, like it's actually followed and that it's just quite generic and it's been, it's been put in place just to, to tick a box. Internal efficiency then. So it says developing and maintaining internal processes is seen as crucial to the business. So this is the one point that I've touched on quite a lot. And when a business grows quickly, this is definitely at risk. Functions such as vehicle deliveries, after sales service and supplier relationships need to be as efficient as possible to deliver growth wanted by the senior management. And it says that performance in this area has been strong. So they're saying effectively that They have kept good internal processes, but I do think that it's still a point that I would be keeping up the sleeve just in case, again, you get asked a question. It could come in on a fraud question, something like this, because as a business grows, if it's not got those processes growing with the business, it does open up chance or an increased chance for fraud. The final area then on the balance scorecard is financial performance. So it says there's been a good start to the business and it's important that finance fundamentals of the business remain strong. The business continues to achieve solid growth in its financial performance. However, with the recent acquisition of WV, there is some concern that the business might be developing too quickly for its capital base. So this is effectively comes back to exactly what I've been saying about the business growing too quickly and being able to actually support customers and give a good customer service journey 
with it being too large, the resource of the business are probably on this acquisition area and they are not taking note or not potentially taking care of existing customers because they're focusing too much on growth to be able to do that. Some of AEM's key personnel, and it lists them below. I don't think there's anything too key to focus on that. And then the last section is the financial statements. So I would assume that these will be different within your exam. However, I think it is worth familiarizing yourself with these, again, just to give you that background information and give you a little bit of confidence going into the exam. So I've looked at a few of these just to provide some context. So the first one I looked at was gross profit margin, which currently comes out at 28.54%. And after doing some research online at various websites around automotive industry, I concluded that that is rather high for a, for a car company. Not in a bad way, obviously it's great. If you had to comment on it, I would say that you could be quite confident there in saying that for this particular industry, that is strong. Uh, looking at the operating profit percentage, that's currently at 5.92%, which is realistic, um, but again, quite, quite strong for the industry, but more relevant, uh, a lot closer to what you would expect to see but still quite strong. It does show though that there must be a decent amount of expenses within there um, to drop from 28.54 down to 5.92. The next one I had a look at was interest cover as well. So this is just looking at how many times using the operating profit can you cover your interest payments. And as it stands, that's at 4.81, which is, is very good. Anything over two is acceptable, but 4.81 is very strong. So even if interest rates did go up, which is relevant obviously for right now, they should still be fine in order to repay any loans. Then moving on to the statement of financial position. So I had a look at this one. I thought something that stood out to me was around the current ratio and quick ratio. So for the current ratio, that's currently sat at 2.05 which is quite strong, that is, that's, that's good. So there's no issues there. So if we took it from a purely a current ratio perspective, we could pay off all sort of short-term liabilities. I think what is interesting though, if we then look at the quick ratio or acid test, this is only 0 0.57, because we can see that the inventory figure is quite high, which is not unexpected for a car sales business. But it does mean if they took that out, the the quick ratio is 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 low. 0.57 isn't isn't good. So they would have to sell off that inventory in order to be able to cover their current liabilities. So just something to bear in mind if you need to comment on that at all. And the last one that I had a look at was gearing. So I did this as debt over debt plus equity, and that comes out at fifty six percent. Now they say anything above 50% is quite high, but just into the high range there at 56%, um, it just means that if interest did go up on loans and they were and we were borrowing more, it's just worth noting that obviously they need to be paid back regardless of what profit the business makes. So it's just where we've got interest rates rising as it is now, that could be a potential risk for the business. I wouldn't say huge, but it is a it is something to be wary of as it's above that 50% mark. And they were the ratios that really stood out to me. Again, it's not something that you'll necessarily test on these figures, but potentially having to compare between years is a possibility. Um, and being able to comment on those, I still think is a good skill to have to be able to talk about the strengths and weaknesses for the business. And that does wrap up my take on the pre-release material. Again, it's not something that you absolutely have to do before you synoptic, but I do think it's worth familiarizing yourself with this company and the industry as a whole. I just think it gives you that little bit of extra confidence in your answers and make them a little bit more specific to the actual B 
business as a whole rather than just putting generic answers in um, to try and cover off those extra few marks. It, it may help. So I hope you found the video useful. And if you have, just drop it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Well, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.